Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel Digital Charcuterie. Hit the like button if you're new here, click subscribe and don't forget to ding that bell to stay up to date with all of our latest videos. Let's talk about Star Wars and the film slate to come slash sl streaming slate. Also, it's streaming, it's film, it's what are we doing? When Disney purchased Lucasfilm in 2012, we were promised that we would get a new Star Wars film every year for the for the for the for the foreseeable future. And then Last Jedi came out and fans were BAM Red Sea. And then Solo came out and and then the, the Rise of Skywalker, and the rest is history. The rest is history. But then Mando came, and it kind of saved Star Wars, right? People are like, oh, oh, maybe, maybe, maybe Star Wars is great again. And we are where we are as the quality. People feel like the quality has shifted, and the writing is weakening, and Accolade has been canceled, and we're in the dark ages. We're getting, we're getting, we're getting stuff. But it's pretty dark. We're going to get more, though. We're going to shine a light on what's coming, what might be coming, what probably isn't coming, and what I would like to see come. Because what has been announced hasn't always been what we, we've been getting. We have been getting a lot of stuff that has not been announced. What kind of Mali and Peace be? <laughs> Which I find wild, like Book of Boba Fett and the Mando and Grogu movie. They weren't, they weren't on the slates. They were just, hey, these are happening. And we accept them. And, you know, Book of Boba Fett, whatever you think of how that turned out, the, the, the announcement, non-announcement, the tease for it was very exciting. So I hope we get back to that. But let's look at the films that are coming out first, then we'll get to streaming. So first, we have Dawn of the Jedi. The concept of the Dawn of the Jedi film brings us back 25,000 years before the Skywalker saga where we will witness the discovery of the Force, the deep dive into ancient Star Wars lore will uncover how the Jedi Order was founded. If you're a fan of Star Wars Legends or curious about how the galaxy came to understand the Force, this movie promises world-building on an unprecedented scale. Expect fresh characters and unexplored worlds as we see the Jedi's origins for the first time on screen. I have... I have my doubts about this one. I think this is a very exciting idea. I think this is something that they should have done. They should have been planning this movie six years ago when the riot, when the last Jedi came out and we were on that tree on Acto. We they should have kicked this into high gear then. I think if we, if Disney Plus was an option, maybe we got a show back in that time. But I think they're they're a little late to the party on it. Fans of Legends already or the EU they already know what they're going to get. So hopefully they don't. You know the fear is they're they're going to deviate too much from the source material, which is pretty solid in that respect. So I'm hoping they maintain a lot of, of the lore that we know and love. The other downfall for me that I, why I don't think this film is going to happen. If it does, it, it'll be a different iteration is James Mangold. I think the last Indiana Jones movie was a financial disaster for Lucasfilm. I mean, I think it was probably on the scale of solo oddly enough. And, and I don't, so I don't know how, how well in standing James Mangold is with Lucasfilm at this time. Uh, he is doing Swamp Thing for DC reportedly. Who knows if that's happening either, but he's supposedly doing that. So he's working on both. And it sounded like he was going to work on that before this. So I don't know. I don't know where it is in the timeline. We haven't heard much about it. D23 in August didn't shed any light on it. So I, I'm, I'm, you know, I'm not so convinced we're getting this one anytime soon. I think we will get something to this effect. I just don't think it's going to happen anytime soon. The Ray movie. Okay. Classified, really? Me too. Big secret. New Jedi Order, set 15 years after the rise of Skywalker. This film features Ray building a new Jedi Order. Daisy Ridley's return was big news and uh, she keeps getting asked about it and she keeps answering questions about it i think i can handle myself my opinion on this i think we're going to get I, just like the james mangold dawn of the jedi i think we're going to get this eventually but i don't think it's going to be what they're saying here originally damon lindelof wrote a, a script where ray was in her 60s and they were like no we want daisy ridley and they worked it young to make her younger i think this is going to get reworked and retooled and i think you know if they are afraid of the sequel trilogy era if they're afraid of touching those characters i think just like the prequels over time time heals all wounds i think you'll be able to get away with it i think fans for the most part, they don't have anything against Daisy Ridley. I think the people that don't like Ray don't like Ray because they, they you know, they're upset that Ray's getting the Luke Balkovan and some other stuff. And I, for me, I think what you do is you take Ray 
Uh, you don't make her Obi Wan Kenobi. You make her Rey, and you and you have her train these new Jedi. And I I think you focus on the new Jedi. You have a new hero, and a new protagonist, a new antagonist, but you have Rey in there in some capacity. I'm not going to say Dark Rey because they're not going to do that, but I think you go Dark Rey. That would be totally dope. But I think I think that's what you do. You don't make Rey the main character. You make her a part of a greater a greater movie, which is what Star Wars is. I don't know what's happening where we're where Star Wars is getting sucked in this vacuum of like everything has to be about one character. We're following one character at a time. Star Wars was an ensemble. It's like when they were like, we're going to get to the Filoni movie in a bit, but it's like, that's the Avengers style movie where everybody's going to get together. Like, But that is what Star Wars started as. A New Hope is the Avengers coming together to go save Alderaan, Princess Leia and Alderaan. Right? That's, that is what A New Hope is, and that's what Star Wars is. Star Wars is already is already the the Avengers teamed up. They're already together. But for some reason, they want to focus on all these individual characters. I say you make Ray part of an ensemble because that's a natural progression of it. And I think, look, if you make a good movie, no one's going to care. People are going to go see this movie. If you make a good movie, people will show up to it. That's just how, make a good show, we'll watch it. Make a good movie, we'll show up to it. Look, opening weekend, maybe some of the fans that are pissed off aren't going to come. But they're going to, but if it's really good and you can't stay away, Star Wars fans are loyal Look how many podcasts we've done at Rebel Scum Podcasts where people are like, I hated, you know, The Last Jedi. I hated Rise of Skywalker. I only saw it 77 times in the theater. Star Wars fans want to go to the movies and watch Star Wars, and they will. They will go. Mandalorian and Grogu. This one has me super excited. It was not hinted at at all. It just I came out of nowhere. They're like, we need some goodwill with fans. Let's tell them we're making this movie. D23, some footage dropped. Looked spectacular. So much fun. Maestro, mouse droids. Zeb. ATSD action, I think. There was a lot of things going on in there. I wasn't in the room. I don't know. But it looks like a lot of fun. You have to have faith in Favreau, especially Favreau. Maybe people have lost a little bit of faith in Filoni because of his role. We don't really know what any of them do anyway. But Favreau, I think I, I think this guy just loves Star Wars. He breathes Star Wars, and he has so much fun in this world. And one thing is, I know everyone hates the volume now, but, he, but George Lucas always wanted to progress the technology, right? Star Wars is about what's new, what's fresh, what's innovative. And that's kind of how Favreau is on this course. And that's why I'm very excited for the Mando Grogu movie. It was going to be season four of The Mandalorian, which they've now converted into, into this movie. It was Moff Gideon coming back. That's my big question. I'm a big Moff Gideon fan. I Especially when he was in the Mando gear in season three. Say what you want about season three, Mando gear. Uh, uh, Moff Gideon was fantastic. I'm excited for this movie. Don't know what the stakes are. Uh, again, though, Giancarlo Esposito at Dragon Con a little while ago, he kind of mentioned how this could be part of a bigger picture, maybe three movies, maybe more. He said he wants to effing come back and all that stuff, and I think it's all great. Is this my question? Is it's called Mandalorian and Grogu, not the greatest title. Again, I don't don't pin it on one or two characters. Make it about, but anyway, they're they're trying to reestablish Star Wars. But is this going to be a new hope for? the the new movies is this like and what i mean by that is this going to be a standalone movie that leaves doors open to expand and to grow and to tell more stories with or without ahsoka and and, and skeleton crew and all that that's what i'm very curious about and i'm excited to see how they're going to do that because we know that the Filoni movie's coming. Nothing is known about the Filoni movie other than they're saying it's going to be like the Avengers style event. We're going to get the Mandovers coming together for some kind of, of, of threat to fend off some threat. I have speculation. You can watch the videos on the channel. We don't know if it's going to be the Grisk, if it's going to be the Yuzan Vong, if it's going to be Abeloth. We don't know what it's going to be or how it could play out. I think if you're playing the long game, you make it something like the Yuzan Vong or Grisk, very similar. You make it something like that if you're not going to use them in ahsoka season two which we will get to in just a little bit that's so i think the threat has to be bigger than you're getting on tv and it's got to be something of epic scale for us to continue to go to but i think the movies leading up to it need to build to it and we don't know what those movies are other than mando and grogu which i think is going to be a very small self-contained movie as i said and because it's going to be season four of, of the show and they just made it a movie, which I think a bunch of these shows that they made should have been to begin with. Next up, we're going to talk about Taika Waititi's movie. You're out of here. Apparently it's on hold. Not going to happen. How long can you like you announce a movie? I think it was in the Hollywood Reporter. I think the Hollywood Reporter announced the Taika Waititi thing. And that's out of here. Kevin Feige, you're out of here. There were so many movies that are out of here. But the Taika Waititi movie is reportedly like the Ray movie. On hold and definite hold. I think Thor Love and Thunder really kind of uh, put the axe into that one. I think Taika Waititi, love you. See you next time. Back from the Dead is Rogue Squadron. Patty Jenkins uh, at 
at the shareholder meeting years ago, came out and said, I'm making Rogue Squadron. I believe in Rogue Squadron. My father was a fire a pilot, fighter pilot, blah, blah, blah. I think that that's because I grew up the daughter of a great fighter pilot. All this stuff, we were all very excited. Okay, Rogue Squadron is happening. My question was always then and is now, how is this movie exciting versus the Disney Plus stuff? Like, what is it about this that makes me say, I want to see this in the theater versus all the Disney Plus stuff that we've gotten? Like, what are, what are the stakes? What is the scale of this film? And how do you drive? And not just me. I mean, I'm going to go to the theater to get it, I know. But the casual fans that have Disney Plus to say, well, I don't, why don't I just watch this at home? Why are they going to go see a Rogue Squadron movie? I still have those questions. She said back, I believe, March 2024 on an interview that she's back in the saddle. You know, Wonder Woman uh, 3 was poop canned by the Gun Saffron uh, execs over at DC Studios, and she's back in the Star Wars fold. Since then, it's been radio silence, which I don't know if that's a good thing or a bad thing, but it is a thing. It is a fact. We have heard nothing left on Rogue Squadron. It could be very exciting. Brock loves loves the X-Wing stuff. Uh, I'm, I'm Look, give me some Star Wars, and I'm all in on it. It was originally slated for a December 2023 release and then was suddenly ditched off of their release schedule, the Disney release schedule, Rogue Squadron promises to focus on the legendary starfighter pilots of the Rebel Alliance. Though the timeline and plot remain uncertain, the concept of starfighter combat being central to a Star Wars movie is thrilling. Fans of high octane space battles like those in A New Hope or Rogue One will want to watch this one. And this last one has me perplexed. It's a Sean Levy directed one. I'm actually a fan of his. I saw Big Fat Liar, Pink Panther, Cheaper by the Dozen. I own all these movies. I'm actually a fan. He just did Deadpool and Wolverine, which was a massive hit. He also had Free Guy and The Adam Project, which I don't know how The Adam Project did because it was a streaming show, but Free Guy was a hit for the studio during a time when movies weren't making money at all. So he is on. He so he is a director that studios really want to work with. Now he's been talking kind of little tidbits about a Star Wars movie. How he wants to go on a different timeline. There's been some rumors and speculation that him and Mangold have talked about how to connect their movies to some some effect. Not much is known. And with the new direction of Star Wars, the way it's going, the way they're kind of because of the dark time we're in, they're not sure of themselves. Like I said, Acolyte got canceled. The new Outlaws video game only sold a million units in the first month. Uh, you know, it's in a low spot right now, so I'm not sure how they how he fits in to what they're doing over there. If they're going to give him a chance to do something totally new and unique, I think Disney is a little bit afraid of touching anything that's not in the original trilogy timeline right now. I think they really want to stick with the Mandoverse and keep that. Uh, keep all of those connected and really put all their eggs in that basket for the time period. But Sean Levy, like I said, he just did Deadpool and Wolverine, which was which grossed over a billion dollars in a time when you know the box office isn't dead like it was when Free Guy came out. But it's not you know movies have been bombing all over the place and everyone's trying to figure out why and how to save the box office. And he steps in with Ryan Reynolds and Hugh Jackman and does it. You can also just say, well, I mean, they were always going to make a billion dollars, maybe. But the movie also had to be fun and, and good enough for people to want to go see it multiple times. I don't know if it, I don't know if Deadpool and Wolverine have the fan base like Star Wars, where people will go see a film they don't like for <laughs> four or seven or eleven times in the theater. I, they might there might be some like that, but I don't think there's the percentage isn't the same as with Star Wars. I think Star Wars is, their fan base is psychotic and crazy, and that's how they work. And that leads us to Lando. There was a show. But now it's a movie. Donald Glover said he wants to put the fun back into Star Wars. Again, though, you're making a movie about one character, uh, which is, a, I guess, a spinoff off of Solo, the one that made no money. But I guess it's not because it's Lando. It's such a weird spot here. I'm all in. Like, Donald Glover, great writer, great actor. I thought he was great as Lando. I think it was a little bit underused as Lando in the movie. I mean, he wasn't... He didn't stand out as much as I was hoping. I don't know. I really like the movie, but I don't know if anything really stands out as much as I was hoping in that movie. But I really like it. It's a fun swashbuckling adventure. And he wants to bring fun back in it. And I think seeing this fun, suave Lando on the screen could do a lot of good for Star Wars and Star Wars fans. I don't know if this movie's ever going to happen, though. Just don't know. I mean, do you know? Nobody knows. He kind of, you know, he talks about it. Yeah, we're writing it. Are you? Are you? Is You know, maybe. I hope it happens. I hope it happens. I'd be in. I'll, for opening night, of course, I'm there. Over on the streaming side of things, we'll kick it off with Acolyte Season 2. Not happening. We were promised, though, Ahsoka Season 2. The Season 2 of Ahsoka, which is, I think, of all the ones coming, this is the one that we need the most. So many, so much unfinished business, so many unresolved questions in this uh, show. I, th I was actually enjoying the show for the most part, and then it went nowhere. 
The only confirmation we got was this image from Dave Filoni himself. There is significant anticipation for the second season of Ahsoka, especially that the first season set the stage for future battles involving, involving Thrawn and possibly even Abeloth. And it's going to be very exciting to see, you know, obviously what Balin was up to, what Shin was up to. We have some theories on that on the channel. You can check those out. But what about Ezra and Thrawn? What's going on there? How do they connect? How does Hera fit into a chopper? I mean, chopper's a big deal. How does all of that play into it? And how do you get, and, and what what are they doing when the Mando and Grogu movie's happening? And are we, is this going to lead into like an Ahsoka themed centric movie maybe? Is it going to lead to the Dave Filoni Avenger style team up film? Will this season kind of bleed right into that? And how do you separate the two as well? There's a lot going on with this season. I'm hoping that they actually finish it this time because last season, it just felt like it was half of the season and they just stopped short. And I hope we don't get that again. And or season two is on its way. Arguably the strongest of all the Star Wars shows. I loved season one. It was a slow burn. I think they needed to release the first three episodes at once to get fans involved because nothing really happens until the end of the third episode. And I'm fine. With, I love those slow burns and people talking. I'm all, I'm all about that. I'm like, you make this boring. I am watching this. But I, th- I mean, it was for me, it was the best uh, visually looking show it, the cinematography was out of this world no pun intended was there a pun intended and uh you know the writing was on was pretty stellar they did use the s word i won't say shit, but you know they used that and um people were conflicted again not a, you know the aliens the settings was it all star wars not completely star wars fans are really split on this one i think it's incredibly strong i would put this probably mando season one and and or season one back to back like that in my rankings if i were doing rankings i'm not today we're doing that on uh, later in November on Rebel Scum Podcast. But that's where I have it. I'm excited for Andor Season 2. Well, you know, his sister, uh, the sister storyline, will that become a thing? Are we going to find out what's going on there? What's really happening with the sister storyline? I have some theories on that maybe we'll discuss. But I can't wait to see where we're going to go. Again, had some of the best writing, some of the best cinematography. I think probably the best cinematography in Star Wars and some of the best acting as well. The acting was phenomenal on the show. I'm lo- looking forward to Andor Season 2. And we have Skeleton Crew coming December 3rd. Cannot wait. It is putting the fun back in fundum, whatever that means. We're doing Road to Skeleton Crew on Rebels Come Podcast uh, Network. And you can see some videos here and more videos over there as well. And it's a lot of fun. I think this trailer, like, I was really looking forward to it. And the trailer surprised me in such a positive way. I know that that there are elements that look that resemble earth a little too much people find, but I love the idea that they live on this suburban planet and they're going to be jettisoned to an adventure in the star Wars galaxy. It's kind of like, you know how you would feel. And I've kind of thought maybe it's a little bit more explorers than Goonies and whatnot, but I am excited to see where it's going to go, how it's going to play in. It takes place in the Mando timeline. Vane, the pirate from Mando season three is in this show. We have some new ones as well. Uh, Brutus, I think his name was and Pax looks cool. And, and Gunter, we have Urkel playing Gunter. It looks like a lot of fun. I think it, you know, Lando, Lando, Don, Don, Donald Glover mentioning how Star Wars isn't fun anymore. This show to me looks like it's going to put the fun back in fun and in, in Star Wars. And I think, you know, people are saying maybe it's too cute. It's too much for kids. Isn't that what Star Wars is all about? Really? You know, it's that, it's that childhood uh, fantasy of going on a wild adventure. And that's what this show is at least going to try to capture whether or not it gets there. I, I don't, I don't know. We'll find out. I guess at some point in time and Kenobi season two, not confirmed, not happening. It would be nice to see this one expand for sure. Like book of Boba Fett. It was a limited series, but I think unlike book of Boba Fett, even though this one had a beginning, middle end and end, I think that there is room for more stories of Obi-Wan Kenobi, especially since Ewan McGregor wants to play him. Uh, But that remains to be seen. That is not, it's not my money. They're not spending my money. They're spending their money. And it's what they want to do, what they want to make. And if they have a strong enough idea. But those are all of the movies that have and streaming series that are coming to you from a galaxy far, far away. Are you excited for them? Are there something you're looking forward to more than others? Uh, are, or are you off the Star Wars bandwagon altogether? Or has it reeled you in? And are you petitioning for Ahsoka or for Acolyte Season? All these things start with an A. Or are you petitioning for Acolyte Season 2? to happen let me know what you guys think in the comments down below thanks so much for watching everybody give us a like and a subscribe and until next time may the force of others be with you